This episode is going to be, I think, far more conversational than my typical episode. Let's just talk for a minute about these books. I'm talking about Talk About Tricks. We've all seen the hype. Vanishing Ink has done a great job of pushing these books out there, getting your attention, letting you know that everyone and their brother thinks that these are just the greatest collection of magic ever. Normally when I review a book, I read it completely, cover to cover. However, with these books, it would take me way too long to read them word for word, cover to cover, and I think most of us already know what's included. And if you don't already know what's in Talk About Tricks, I'll spend the first part of this video getting you up to speed, letting you know what you can expect from the books. No book is perfect and these aren't any exception. I did find some flaws and I'll share those with you, as well as the one major obstacle for most people to get these books. But don't worry, I want you to stick around because even if you think that these books are out of your league, out of your price range, I found a way that I think you can still absorb the contents and certainly I hope you'll enjoy just looking through Joshua Jay's love letter to the magic community. In case you aren't familiar with Joshua Jay or talk about tricks, let me give you a brief introduction. Joshua Jay, along with Andy Gladwin, is one of the co-founders of Vanishing Incorporated. Josh has been doing magic for basically forever. When he was a child, his father took him to Magi Fest. He fell in love with magic at a very young age. And by the time he was in college, he decided that he wanted to start writing about magic. Enter Stan Allen and Magic Magazine. For 12 years, I was the tricks editor at Magic Magazine. He did this from September 2001 all the way through January 2013. These books, and I'll attempt to lift them. Ugh. <laughs> Seriously, guys, these are super heavy. I'm gonna weigh these because I have no idea how many pounds and pounds of magic. The contributors to Josh's column reads like a veritable who's who of American and international magicians over the time period cover. It's an astounding amount of great magic. There's no denying that. So if you're here for this review to find out, is this worth it? Well, the short answer is yes. There's something for just about every kind of performer, especially if you're into close-up magic. Now, there's no way that I could go through every trick or even really highlight some of my own favorites. The way I look at these books is that they are kind of a love letter to a bygone era of magic. Back in the day, magic magazines were how new magic creators got published. There wasn't any internet, and unless you were already famous enough to have gone on a nationwide lecture tour, it was unlikely that people had ever heard of you or your magic, unless you were one of the rare subjects like Di Vernon, Al Baker, Ted Anneman, or somebody like that. And even those guys got their start by putting their names out there in magic magazines. That's exactly what Joshua Jay did for almost 13 years. Names like Harapan Ong. If you've seen my interview with him, you know that he started out by submitting tricks to talk about tricks, and some of what he sent in certainly got published, and then later became the basis for what we now know as Principia. The neat thing about a collection like Talk About Tricks is that you're getting kind of samplers of different books because a lot of magicians sent tricks in to the magazine and Josh wrote them up. And then later those magicians decided that they had enough material, whether through Magic Magazine or other places that they had published effects, that they would write their own book. John Bannon gave some material that later made it into Dear Mr. Fantasy. John Lovick submitted some tricks that later became part of his Handsome Jack, etc. I could go on and on. There are so many creators who submitted material, and the material that you're getting in this is world class. A number of these items have been used to fool Penn and Teller. Going back to what I mentioned a second ago with John Lovick, I Dream of Mind Reading was a submission that he made that Joshua J himself modified and used on Penn and Teller Fool Us to fool the bad boys of magic. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were many, many magic magazines out there that were competing for magicians' dollars. When you go throughout history, the Sphinx and the Jinx, the Phoenix, Hugard's Magic Monthly, Harry Lorraine's Apocalypse, Richard's Almanac by Richard Kaufman, The Chronicles, The Trap Door, The Kabbalah. There's just dozens and dozens of magazines over the years that have brought so much great magic. And the beauty of a periodical is that you get tricks from 
different creators. It's not just one person. And because there's a passage of time that the magazine has to come out monthly, you're getting magic that continues to adapt and change with the culture around it. Now for me, I was not a subscriber to Magic Magazine, so I didn't have the pleasure of reading all of the talk about tricks I got to see in these books. For me, that's been one of my favorite parts, is just a walk back through Magic history from that time period back in 2001 through 2013 to see how much Magic has changed, and even the way things are published, that's changed as well. This is a monster set of Magic books. There are 868 tricks. 868 tricks. Those are some of the things that I liked. Let's talk about a few things that might have been slightly disappointing to me. Before we go on though, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this episode, Don's Magic and Books. Don carries all kinds of tremendous magic books, DVDs, props, etc. on his website, donsmagicandbooks.com. If the talk about tricks set of books seems a little pricey to you, you may want to wait, although I have a tip coming up for you that will help you save if you're interested in these contents but just aren't sure about the full price tag. Don will eventually have Talk About Tricks in stock, so if you want to grab these with a discount, every little bit helps. If you live in the United States and you purchase $20 or more of media items, Don will give you a full refund of your shipping charges. And if you're one of my international friends, you can use shipit2.com to find out how much shipping will be to your location. Be sure to check it out. I will drop some links down in the description below. Let's get back to our discussion. As awesome as I think these books are, there are a couple things that I think could have been slightly better. So what am I talking about? The first kind of nitpicky thing is that there aren't really a lot of extras for a book of this cost. Part of that is probably due to the already enormous size, so any kind of extras would have just taken up extra room, and I'm not really sure what they would have offered. So it's not really a complaint as much as it is just an observation. My final gripe, if you will, is something that I think that could have been done differently. It wasn't done wrong, I just would have done it differently. And that is the index. The index is done in a couple different ways. One is that it's done by creator. No real problem there. And the second way is done by category. Again, that sounds like it might be helpful, but frankly, it's not because they decided to do the index in chronological order. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is that if you know the name of the trick you're looking for, you don't have an easy way to look that up because the tricks aren't listed alphabetically. And the real reason that I have a gripe with that, or a small beef if you will, is that the tricks are already in chronological order. All of the magazines are published in order, but so is the table of contents. So to me, the index in the back almost becomes a duplication of the table of contents. It could have offered even more value if the tricks had been listed under the category section, for example, alphabetically. That's probably the way I would have done it, but they might have had a really great reason why they did it the way they did. I just found it slightly annoying because, for example, I wanted to look at Hitchcock right away. I had no idea when it was published, and I could have just gone straight to Joshua Jay and looked through every trick, but little did I know it was published basically towards the end of the run. So as I went through, I had to go through every trick before I finally found it. If it had been in alphabetical order, I would have known exactly where to find it really quickly, which in books these size, I think would have been tremendously helpful. Look, I'm not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. This is really not that big of a deal. I'm just trying to be fair and honest in my review that this is something that I would have liked a little bit better had the index been done differently. As far as who would like these books, I think that they are for the serious student of magic. I think if you're someone who's only been into magic for a short period of time, maybe you don't know all of the creators out there and you're hearing some of these names that are being shown from the book or that I've thrown out and you don't know who they are, you're going to have a harder time navigating this book and knowing what might work for you, what styles people have, etc. Now along the way, there are some tools to help you. There's a little diamond difficulty measure for each trick that tells you on a scale of one being the easiest and five being the most difficult, how hard is it to do this trick? Now, of course, that's highly subjective, but by and large, I think it's pretty accurate. And if you're overwhelmed by the amount of information and really don't know where to start, every year Joshua J published some of his top tricks for that year, which is also included here in the back. So you can really quickly see what did he think were some of the top tricks for each year. We've been talking this whole episode about the value that these books offer, but let's talk for a minute about the cost. These books are a heavy investment at $250. 
Now, is it worth it? If you meet the criteria that I talked about, that you're a more established magician, you're very serious, you wanna learn from all different kinds of magicians, or you just want a beautiful set of reference books on your shelf covering a huge portion of American and international magic, then these are right up your alley. If you're not sure, this is a lot to invest in one set of books. So I have a recommendation for you. There's actually a way to get all of the content in these books and it solves a few of the problems that I talked about previously, like not being able to find things because they're not in alphabetical order. That's done away with with my solution. Are you ready? My solution is that if you just want to sample this material, say for a year, you can do it for as little as $35. Yeah, that's right. Genie Magazine purchased all of the rights to Magic Magazine's back issues. So if you buy a digital only subscription to Genie Magazine, which at the time of this video costs about $35, you receive access for one year to a complete archive of all Genie and Magic Magazines that are completely searchable. So if you wanna check out Joshua J's Talk About Tricks column, you can subscribe to Genie for a year for $35, search to your heart's content, read to your heart's content, and decide, is this the type of material that you think would work for you, and did you fall in love with it? Once you've made that initial investment, now you can much more easily make the decision about whether or not you wanna spend the money to acquire these books. I hope this discussion has been helpful to you. It's not my typical review, but I did want you to know as much as I could tell you about these books and show you a brief glimpse into the beautiful world of Talk About Tricks. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.